Hello, my name is Fran Clifton and we're here at Sir Harold Hillier Gardens in Hampshire. I'll be showing you our wildflower meadows and I'll be talking about wildflowers and pollinators and show you some of the plants we have in our meadows and how we care for our meadows here at the gardens. At Sir Harold Hillier Gardens, we have the, the lovely meadow I'm standing in right now, which is fairly recent. We have our old meadows, which are more in the heart of the gardens and have been established for several decades with good colonies of orchids. But we also have woodland meadows, which are probably more in the shade and maybe less commonly known, but they are just as important. So if you have a shady garden, um, edge of woodland, um, anything will do like that and you will have just as nice of wildflowers. Now, meadows are, have a wider reach than just the pollinators and those lovely butterflies we can observe. The food chain leading on from the pollinators, of course, is then things like bats. And here at the gardens, in the evenings, when dust just settles, the bats come out and they, of course, then feed on the insects, so moths and hoverflies and some of the other insects which fly at night. So it's really important to encourage wildflowers, to encourage those pollinators and those little insects because it, as it goes, it goes higher up the chain and then further up with other mammals in tow. So we started not cutting the meadow about five years ago, and the only cut we do, we do one cut a year at the end of the season when the seeds have dropped and the grass has turned and the wildflowers are then sort of dying off basically. We come in and we have a local farmer who cuts the meadow for us, but you can do that with your mower. And then just the important thing is that you pick up the clippings afterwards. As long as that is all taken away to not fertilize and break down and, and feed the grass, so to speak, because the wildflowers are actually thrive best if you treat them mean to keep them keen. All the wildflowers, which you can see here, we've just pocket sown those. Um, that was really important to us that we don't disturb the original grassland and we just introduced some species of wildflowers which are good for our soil here and we can make use of them or they have a, a longevity to it um, and they will develop the biodiversity within our meadow. So in this clump of wildflowers here we've got a, a mass of things here actually. There is this lovely oxide daisies which probably most of you will recognize even on roadside verges you can see that quite quite frequently. Um, there's another one here which is a knapweed, not quite ready to flower yet. That's just a touch later but again beautiful. It looks a bit like a cornflower but slightly more purple really. And then we have the Lathyrus here which is quite a tall species. Um, it's a sweet, it's, it's like a le little sweet pea and you know sweet peas, they're lovely scented here, this one here and this one has even um, a yeah, it's very gently scented, but it's it's a high for um, good f food source for for pollinators here. And then we have, of course, the vicia, which is just below there, the mat of yellow flowers, and bees just love it. That tends to flatten the grassland out as well a little bit, as you can see. It's just sort of really sprawling out, but that doesn't really matter. The grass is really there as the support, um, but it's the wildflowers we really want to have in this meadow. Here, you can just see the orchids, a massive clump of well-established common spotted orchids. So the basal leaves have large blodgy patches. Flowers, you can see here, this is a massive one actually, a good 60 centimeters tall. They vary in color quite a bit. So stronger pinks, dark pinks, almost white over here. Um, orchids take a while to establish. They don't like it everywhere either, but this one obviously is really, really happy. You can also see here that the seed, these ones have finished flowering now, and we can see that the seed is nicely developing on those, on those flower heads. And this is something which is really important in a, in a wildflower meadow, that you give it time. Of course, it's lovely to see the flowers, but actually the important bit is the seed afterwards, that we leave it time, give it time to then develop the seed and the seed can fall within the meadow. We have got another plant in here, which is this yellow one called yellow rattle. This makes basically space for the seed to fall. Yellow rattle is a parasitic plant, lives on the grass root or the thatch of grasses and eats that away and then creates pockets of soil where the seed of these lovely orchids can fall in and start developing. Is I'll just pick one of the seed heads here. You can hear it rattling really nicely, the seed in there. 
Um, and these seeds are quite flat. They're like, like mini discs really. And they will literally just fall in between and make space for more flowers to seed into those gaps later on. Yellow rattle will only be there as long as it's got grass to live on. Eventually, once your meadow is really fully um, cultivated with plants, um, that's when yellow rattle sometimes can go in a bit of a decline because there isn't enough for it to live on. So pollinators which you might find and you'll recognize in your garden are the straightforward butterflies. You might know the, the peacock or even the marbled white. That's really exciting little white butterfly with black veining through it, which is lovely. Gatekeepers, ringlets. If you're really lucky, you might find a holly blue or a, one of the other blue butterflies in there, which are really pretty. The other thing not to be dismissed, I think, in a meadow, and you might not see them as much because they're evening and night feeding, are the moths. So it's really important to remember those as well. So any flowers which are open at, in the evening hours or at night time, that's where the moths will feed on. The same for night insects as well. The other insects you'll find is, of course, we've just seen a bumblebee and a bee buzzing about. Hoverflies are an important species too. And then, of course, any of the kind of stinging insects, which we might not want really, but even the little insects, mosquitoes and so forth, they might even feed on those kind of plants as well. So pollinators are not just there to give us pretty meadows and for us to have a whale of a time observing butterflies and bumblebees, but pollinators are actually really, really important for us. They're doing a great job for us. We have here a fantastic little orchard um, with some of the apple trees and we would not have apples if pollinators wouldn't be around. There's a wider aspect to the whole thing of making sure that the pollinators are happy and have a, a safe haven to go to in a meadow because they're actually, they're giving us apples, they're giving us food. Any, any food you find which is pollinated in the wild um, or on farmland is because of bees, butterflies and hoverflies. So how can you create your own meadow at home? Well, there's only a few things you have to bear in mind. Um, one of them is that you only do one, maximum two cuts a year. So maybe a very early one um, in the year to keep it close, um, close down. But the important bit is as soon as the wildflowers start to grow up and come up with all their flowers, and that's when you stop mowing. Mowing then sets in again, usually around late August, maybe September time if you can bear it, because they do look really lovely. The important thing is once you've cut the grass, you need to pick it up, put it in a compost heap or send it with your recycling uh, goods to the local waste collection. But you need to take it off your your grass really to, to keep it put the soil poor. You don't want to fertilize the meadow. To introduce plants, you can go two ways. Either you can introduce seeds, best sown in the autumn, so September, October time, when the normal seed would fall off the flowers, land amongst the grass, and then would have time to germinate during winter time. Now, this is for a perennial meadow we're talking, by the way. So these will be plants will be there for forever, basically, if you look after the meadow. And um, so the seed will germinate, it grows during winter time, and then in springtime you will have your first flush of a little bit of flowering, which is really lovely. You might want to watch what kind of soil you're on, that you're matching wildflowers to soil structure as well, but any seed company is happy to help you find out about those details. Another thing to bear in mind is you don't need to have huge, a huge space to have your meadow. It could be just a square meter where you're leaving the grass growing long in your own garden, be it front garden or back garden or wherever. It might be the verge which is being kept long. Anything will help. And also you don't need to have a really sunny meadow like we have here. You can have a meadow in half shade. The plants will be different, but you will do exactly the same job. You will be attracting pollinators or beneficial insects for your garden, which help to uh, stimulate biodiversity and really make a, a lot more of your garden than you would otherwise have. So as you can see, it, it really isn't that difficult to have your own little patch of a meadow in your back garden. Anybody can give it a go. Um, it's great fun to start it off and then to watch it develop. To stick to some of the guiding principles which we've highlighted today, and you'll have just as much fun as we have here. Thank you very much for watching and good luck with your own meadow at home. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.